the following four figures have been drawn to represent a fictitious thermo dynamic cycle on the PV and TS planes the figures were indicated on four planes according to first law of thermodynamics equal areas are enclosed by a figures 1 and 2 let me indicate the figures first this is figure 1 this is figure 2 this is figure 3 this is figure 4 b figures 1 and 3 c figures 1 and 4 D figures two and three. Now, according to the first law, the answer A could be given as according to the first law of thermodynamics, cyclic integral of delta Q is equal to cyclic integral of delta W. Cyclic integral of delta Q is nothing but net heat transfer in the cycle, which is equal to enclosed area of cycle on TS plane. Similarly, cyclic integral of delta W is equal to net. work transfer in cycle which is equal to enclosed area of cycle on pv plane therefore the answer could be given as figure 1 and 2 because they are having the same areas and both the cycles are running in the clockwise sense which means the figures 1 and 2 are indicating the heat engine cycle that is net heat transfer is equal to the net work transfer answer is a figures 1 and 2 should have the same areas according to the first law now consider a another problem of refrigerator and heat pump given in the previous gate examination problem consider a refrigerator 
एंड ये हीट पंप वर्किंग ऑन दी रिवर्स रिकार नॉट साइकिल बिटवीन दी सेम टेम्परेचर लिमिट्स विच ऑफ दी फॉलोइंग इज करेक्ट ये COP of refrigerator is equal to COP of heat pump. B. COP of refrigerator is equal to COP of heat pump plus one. C. COP of refrigerator is equal to COP of heat pump minus one. D. COP of refrigerator is equal to inverse of COP of heat pump. We know that whenever a Carnot cycle is used. that is reversed carnot cycle is used for the refrigerator which is represented as a rectangle on ts plane any cycle which is going in the anti clockwise sense is meant for either refrigerator or heat pump refrigerator and heat pump both do the same task but based on the what we need from the machine we call the same machine sometimes as refrigerator and sometimes as the heat pump if the useful effect wanted from the machine is heat absorbed from the low temperature it is called refrigerator if the heat rejected to the high temperature is the useful effect it is called heat pump cop of carnot refrigerator is given by low temperature divided by high temperature minus low temperature whereas cop of carnot heat pump is given by high temperature divided by high temperature minus low temperature from these two relations we can state that cop of carnot heat pump is equal to cop of carnot refrigerator plus 1 now let us consider a problem of thermodynamics given in gate 2006 ye football was inflated to a gauge pressure of 1 bar when the ambient temperature was 15 degrees celsius when the game started next day the air temperature at the stadium was 5 degrees centigrade assume that the volume 
of the football remains constant at 2500 cm cube then the question is question number 1 the amount of heat lost by the air in the football and the gauge pressure of air in the football at the stadium respectively or given as 30.6 joules 1.94 bar b 21.8 joules comma 0.93 bar c 61.1 joules comma 1.94 bar d 43.7 joules comma 0.93 bar the solution to this above problem is given as heat transferred at constant volume is given as mcv delta t per an ideal gas like air the mass of air can be taken as pv by rt where r is the characteristic gas constant of air where p is the absolute pressure of air but the gauge pressure is given as 1 bar therefore absolute pressure is equal to p gauge plus p atmosphere p gauge is 100 kilo pascal because the pressure should be kept always in kilo pascal when it is used in the ideal gas equation that is pv is equal to mrt therefore p absolute is equal to 100 kilo pascal plus 101.3 kilo pascal that is a standard atmosphere therefore p absolute is 201.3 kilo pascal then the volume of the football is given as 2500 cc it will be equal to the 2500 into 10 power minus 6 meter cube because volume should be kept in meter cube r of air is 0.287 kilo joules per kg degree centigrade the temperature of air initially is 288 kelvin therefore mass of air is 201.3 into 2500 into 10 power minus 6 divided by 0.287 into 288 this results in mass of air in the football in kg therefore q rejected at constant volume is mass of air which is obtained earlier which is shown in the rectangular block in kg 
CV of air is 0.718, initial temperature is 15, final temperature is 5. While taking the difference of temperatures, we don't have to convert the temperatures into Kelvin. We can keep as it is them in Celsius while taking the difference. So this results in 43.7 into 10 power minus 3 kilojoules, which results in 43.7 joules. This is the heat answer for heat transferred at constant volume from the football when the temperature is dropping from 15 degrees Celsius to 5 degrees centigrade. Then coming to the gauge pressure of air in the football at the stadium that is second part of the problem. We have to apply the Charles law. That is volume remaining constant implies P is directly proportional to the absolute pressure. Where P is absolute pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature in Kelvin. That is P absolute 2 divided by P absolute 1 is equal to T2 by T1 where T2 is equal to temperature in the stadium next day that is 5 plus 273 T2 is 5 plus 273 that is the temperature in the stadium next day divided by initial temperature is 15 plus 273 therefore P absolute at 2 is equal to 201.3 into 288 divided by 278 I'm sorry 278 divided by 288 this gives the P absolute next day in kilopascal therefore P gauge Two, that is next day at uh, 5 degrees Celsius that is at the stadium will be P absolute at uh, 2 minus P atmosphere where P atmosphere is 101.3 kilopascal which results in a point 0.93 into 100 kilopascal. Hence the answer would be D 0.93 bar P gauge at 2 is equal to 0.93 bar because 100 kilopascal is equal to 1 bar. Another problem which was given along this data is gauge pressure of air to which the football must have been originally inflated so that it would equal 1 bar gauge at the stadium is A 2.23 bar B 1.94 bar C 1.07 bar D 1 bar The solution to this problem is again given from Charles' law 
that is P absolute 2 that is at stadium divided by P absolute at 1 on previous day is equal to temperature 2 at stadium divided by T1 on previous day. In this problem it is been given that P absolute at 2 at stadium is given as 100 kilopascal gauge because one bar is 100 kilopascal plus 101.3 kilopascal that is atmospheric pressure. It results in 201.3 kPa absolute that is the pressure in the ball at stadium. Substituting in the above problem we get 201.3 divided by P absolute at 1 is equal to 5 plus 273 divided by 15 plus 273 both the temperatures must be in Kelvin from which P absolute at 1 that is on previous day to which the balloon must have to be inflated is obtained in kilopascals. If we subtract from this P atmosphere that is 101.3 kilopascal you will obtain P gauge in kilopascal that will be obtained as 107 kilopascal. In bar it is represented as 1.07 bar. Now let us consider a problem of adiabatic nozzle given as air enters a frictionless adiabatic converging nozzle at 10 bar comma 500 Kelvin with a negligible velocity. The nozzle discharges to a region at 2 bar. If the exit area of the nozzle is 2.5 cm square find the flow rate of air through nozzle. Assume CP of air as 1005 joule per kg Kelvin and CV as 718 joule per kg Kelvin. The solution to this problem is given as let us represent the problem over a pictorial form. The inlet pressure P1 is given as 10 bar, T1 is given as 500 Kelvin. The inlet velocity is almost equal to 0 because it is a negligible elastic velocity it is entering. The exit pressure is given as 
two bar. Exit area also is given as 2.5 cm square that is equal to 2.5 into 10 power minus 5 minus 4 meter square because all the areas must be in meter square. First of all, let us calculate the critical pressure at the exit based on the relation P2 by P1 is equal to 2 by gamma plus 1 whole to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1. That is P2 where P2 here is not 2 bar where P2 is P2 star let us indicate it as a star to, disting to distinguish it from the 2 bar. P2 star is the critical pressure of air at exit corresponding to maximum mass flow rate of air through the nozzle that is P2 star that is critical pressure at exit is equal to 10 into 2 by 1.4 plus 1 divided by e to the power of 1.4 divided by 1.4 minus 1 so many bar if this critical pressure is more than 2 bar then mass flow rate must be calculated for exit pressure of critical pressure only because once the critical pressure is reached is reached at exit any further reduction in a back pressure or exit pressure would not increase mass flow rate through nozzle that is once the critical pressure is reached at the exit, nozzle is said to be choked. Once the nozzle is choked, that is, when the critical pressure is obtained at the exit, any further reduction in the exit pressure cannot increase the mass flow rate. Now, in this problem, the mass flow rate would be calculated corresponding to the critical pressure at the exit if it is more than 2 bar that is how the problem could be solved.